CataractCoach.com. Post your polar with a strong capsule. So patient's tissue and anatomy is an important consideration for the outcome here. So you can see patient has a posterior polar cataract here. Video has been sped up and edited. And you can see with that red reflex, that very dense central opacity there. And that is definitely posterior polar material, especially because you see that clean delineation mark there. So making the main incision at the end of the eye, that looks good. Important to get that five millimeter rexus in all these posterior polar cases. You really want a great rexus because remember, the studies show you that it's a very high risk of capsule rupture. Again, published studies show about one in three risk. In practice, with specialized techniques, that can be less. But I want to show you this video because case goes great, capsule stays intact, despite having a posterior polar. And I want to emphasize to you that the patient's tissue is a really important part of this. You can do this exact same technique to 10 different posterior polar cataracts, and you can have different outcomes among your patients. So a patient may not understand is their posterior polar cataract may not be the same as an, another patient's posterior polar cataract. So you can see here, it looks like a little hydro dissection even, getting that nucleus up. I didn't see too much of a delineation, which is what my normal preferred technique is here. So let's see the sculpting here, sculpting down the middle, looks like a nice little groove here. Be careful in posterior polar with these sculpting techniques because when you go to crack the nucleus, that can put pressure on the posterior capsule. So here, groove down the middle. Looks pretty good. Keep going in a little bit deeper. Recoding the cornea there. Again, the tripan blue dye was helpful. Now he's doing a sideways sculpting. Okay, there you go. He noticed Dr. Parvardhan's sideways sculpting technique, so not having to rotate the nucleus. That looks great. And now breaking it up into quadrants. So maybe there wasn't any hydro dissection. Maybe that first attempt was just a hydrodelineation. We'll, we'll accept that. And there's a little bit of a crack and propagating that through. Again, that can put a little stress on the capsules. Be careful. What's interesting in this case is no matter what's done here, no matter how much stretching there is of the capsule, this posterior polar area stays intact. So that, in fact, is amazing. So now bringing up the quadrants, good technique here. And emulsify those. And uh, looking good so far. Here comes the second quadrant. And you want to keep an eye and look back there. Make sure you're not seeing anything unusual happening because you don't want to lose a piece of nucleus here. So now, oh, smart move. I like that. A little extra dispersive viscoelastic to fill the caps or bag. Make sure things are supported in there and separating the last two fragments out. Again, no rotation. And just bringing these pieces out. Good. And a little bit of vacuum. I bet you could bring that piece up. So I like the two-handed technique to help bring the piece into a favorable position. And there you go. Quadrant number three is now being removed, and that's gone. And here comes the last quadrant. Ready for it. Very nice technique. And you look back there, look behind the nucleus, you can still see that posterior polar passage. So, yeah, perhaps this was a good hydrodelineation at the beginning of the case. A little hard to see from the video, but that looks great, removing that. And now you can see epinuclear shell, plus you've got that posterior polar opacity. And so now you can remove whatever you think you can with this, but you may want to do some viscodissection here. And he's just going to aspirate, aspirate. Let's see what happens here. And again, the video was sent to me. I slowed the video down. The video was sent to me like in three minutes in length at ultra, ultra high speed. So I've, I've slowed it down. So we're about five minutes and change here. And so now going in with the viscoelastic, good job there. And let's see what else we're going to do here. Now, well, I like the better red reflex. So now just going in for cortex removal, it looks like that posterior polar opacity from the center got peeled out and already gone. So just this peripheral lens cortex, which is fine. And that looks pretty darn good. So again, this is a, a nice situation where the patient had a good tissue. So you're able to get that posterior polar opacity off and there's no apparent or visible defect of that posterior capsule. So I like the eye probe still stuck in the eye. Fill in the bag, don't let the eye collapse. Smart move here. Here comes the lens being placed nicely in the capsule bag, nice and gentle, and that goes in, and that's a beautiful outcome here. So very nice result here. Remember, if you're doing a posterior polar case like this, and you get everything out, and there's still some smudgy stuff or slight opacities left of that central posterior capsule area, don't touch it, leave it alone. It's okay, I give you permission, leave it alone. You can always come back in a month or two or three and do a YAG laser capsulotomy. Here at the end of the case, careful not to let the AC collapse. I like that technique as well, keeping that eye fully inflated. 
Beautiful result. Patient has a fantastic outcome. Thanks so much for watching.